In this problem, we have a structural member which has rectangular cross section, 250 mils by 450 millimeters, and carries a tensile load of 800 kilonewtons. First, to calculate the stress, then to calculate the increase in length, and then the percentage change in the cross sectional area. We're given Young's modulus as 200,000 newtons per millimeter squared and Poisson's ratio of 0.3. First we're going to do is to draw a simple diagram. So here we have a rectangular cross section. Being subjected to a tensile load of 800 or 8,000 kilonewtons. The length is 4.5 meters and dimensions 450 millimeters and a height of 250 millimeters. To recap the equations we're going to use, stress is equal to force divided by area. Strain is equal to change in length, delta x, over original length, L0. Young's modulus is equal to stress divided by strain. Poisson's ratio is equal to minus the lateral strain divided by the longitudinal strain. To answer part one, to calculate the stress in the member, the part of the member under, under stress is a circular, or is the cross section, which is a rectangle. And to calculate the stress, we use force over area. The force is 8,000 kilonewtons. The area, or the two dimensions, 250 times 450. However, careful, we're going to change the load from kilonewtons into newtons. So we will multiply by an extra thousand. Keep the dimensions in millimeters in the bottom, such that when we work that out, the stress will be 71.11 and the units will be newtons per millimetre squared. Next, part two, determine the increase in length over a span of four and a half metres. To work out the increase in length, we're going to use strain, change in length over original length. We can't apply this initially because we don't have a value for strain, but we can use Young's modulus is equal to stress divided by strain or rearranging this equation for strain stress divided by Young's modulus. We've just previously worked out the stress, so our strain will be given by the stress, which is 71.11, divided by Young's modulus, it's given in the question, as 200,000. Both of these are given in newtons per millimetre squared for the stress and for Young's modulus, so we can divide the two numbers one into each other to give us the strain, which is 3.556 times 10 to the negative 4. Then using our equation for strain, strain is 
gradient is equal to the change in length divided by the original length, L0. We can rearrange this to work out the change in length is equal to the strain times the original length. Strain we have 3.556 times 10 to the negative 4. Multiply that by the original length, 4.5 meters, but we'll keep that in millimeters by multiplying by an extra thousand. And that will give us the change in length in millimeters as 1.6 millimeters. The next part is to work out the percentage change in the cross-sectional area. For this we're going to use Poisson's ratio. But first of all we're going to work out the original cross-sectional area before any load is applied. That's simply going to be the length by the breadth for the cross-section, 250 by 450, and that will give us an original cross-sectional area of 112,500 millimeters squared. Now, we're going to work out the cross-sectional area after the load is applied. And for this, we're going to use Poisson's ratio, which is minus the lateral strain divided by the longitudinal strain. Rearranging this equation for lateral strain, minus Poisson's ratio times the longitudinal strain, we already have the longitudinal strain already worked out. As you can see at the top, 3.556 times 10 to the negative 4. Poisson's ratio is given as a value of 0 0.3. 0 0.3 times 3.556 times 10 to the negative 4 gives us the lateral strain as being minus 1.0668 times 10 to negative 4. It is this lateral strain that's going to affect the dimensions of 250 or 450. So our section 450 millimeters across Two hundred and fifty meters, millimeters tall. The lateral strain will affect the dimension of four hundred and fifty, and will also affect the dimension of two hundred and fifty. So we're going to consider each of these in turn to see what the change in the dimension is, and then we'll use that to work out the new cross-sectional area. So taking B as being the horizontal and D for the vertical height, the change in the B dimension the lateral strain for the B dimension will be the change in the B dimension over the original B dimension, B0. Rearranging this, delta B, the change in the B dimension, is going to be the lateral strain times the original B dimension, B0, 
lateral strain minus 1.0668 times 10 to the negative 4 times 450 and that will give us a change of minus 0 0.048 millimeters. Now calculating the change in the D dimension, again the lateral strain will change this one. It will be the change in the D dimension over the original D dimension, D0, rearranging this equation for the change in D, delta D, will be the lateral strain times d0 minus 1.0668 times 10 to the negative 4 times 250 and that will give us minus 0 0.027 millimeters we can now use the change in these two these two dimensions to work out the new cross-sectional area. So the area, the new area, is going to be given by the new B times the new D dimension. So we have 450 millimeters and it will reduce by 0 0.048 millimeters. I'm going to multiply that by the 250 mil dimension, but it will reduce by not 0 0.027. times 249.952 times 249.973, and that will give us a new cross-sectional area of 112,475.85 millimeters squared. The question asks not for the new area but the percentage change in area. So to do that we need to calculate the change in the cross-sectional area. Divide that by the original area of the cross-section before the load is applied and multiply it by 100 to express it as a percentage. The original area we had was 112,500. We'll take off the new area that we have 112,475.85 divide that by the original cross-sectional area before any load supplied 112,500 multiply it by 100 to express it as a percentage our change in area is 24.15 Divide that by 112,500. Multiply by 100 and we get a change in area of 0 0.0215%.